Now you are. Now yeah. we're recording. We've given you too much responsibility, <sighs> Jeff. You have the music and the record button. I had like two good jokes before I hit the record button. Which ones were good? Those? I don't know oh. if they were good. <laughs> <laughs> and with that, I will say... Welcome to Everyone Racers, a show designed for the world of low-dollar racing and oddball car culture. It doesn't matter what kind of Leva Champ or Lucky Track Dog League you run, SCC or NASA, we won't discriminate as long as you drive it hard and build it yourself. Why am I reading this with no commas or periods? I don't know. Join us each week for a tech discussion, tips, tricks, news and notes in the world of amateur endurance racing, and whether it's on the spot, hella sweet, or lucky enough and Chrissy gives us just the tip, we're sure you'll giggle a little and learn even less. Everyone report to the paddock. This is Chris. This is Chrissy. I'm Jeff. And I'm Mental. And we are Everyone Racers. Thanks for coming back to listen to a fine structure constant episode of our podcast. Number 137. If you're Don't not know what that means. No, but I'm going to ask in a second. Right. Many. <laughs> yeah, it's, so, it's almost as if the guy who does the show notes would have put a hyperlink in there or something. Well, yeah, but then I have to click on it. And then our listeners won't learn what this fine thing is. So well, One of our listeners already knows. Okay. <laughs> Truth. Anyway, don't forget the new e- E1R bingo card, new and improved. It was, it's not really that new. It's kind of is that a math joke. Yeah, it is. Oh, okay. Now I get it. I mean, I don't know what it is, but at least I know who I the one I still don't know what it is. I read the first two it's, paragraphs and I don't get it. It involves quantum electrodynamics. I could read this whole thing and still not tell you what it is. So nah, we could skip that. Bill could tell us. Oh, Bill could tell us. I was thinking Donnie. Yeah, it's Donnie, dude. That too. Yeah. I'm sure right. maybe someone else. Anyway. Quick, quick uh, doctorate fight. Bill, if you think you know it, tweet us or whatever. Instagram us. Because we know Donnie knows. Doctorate go. fight. It's like two sad clowns in a knife fight. <laughs> <laughs> Over a math joke? Yes. <laughs> uh, uh, I, anyway. I still have my show notes up, so as long oh. as I derail, that's what I need. I feel like it's I feel like it would just be the two of them going, These these idiots, of course we know what it is. And then they just kind of clink their beer glasses together and go about whatever, you know. Might be a thing. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I'm very excited. My notes are up. Over the world. Congratulations. Can we get back to the show. Well, I, I'm just going to ask you, Jeff, I know you're excited to talk about what you're working on. I can tell. And you don't need notes to tell us what you're working on. Oh, so. I, I do need my notes well, because this is long. It is okay. long. Then go for it. <laughs> Strap yourselves in, ladies and gentlemen. I'm about to spin a fine tale of automotive uh, uh, archaeology. Is For, there a square that Jeff tells a story that goes nowhere? Yeah, it will. Don't worry. No, I think it's going to go somewhere. Uh, first, I can say that uh, before the weekend hit, I put together my Amazon special sim racing steering wheel pedal pedestal. Chrissy, did it make me any better? No, no, no it didn't. Don't, don't, no. don't shake your head. The podcast can't see that. <laughs> no, it did not. Just because we're on Zoom doesn't mean anyone could hear you. Uh, they yeah. also couldn't see the look on her face of the eyebrows. and No. Uh, <laughs> no, it, 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 I'll have to come up with another excuse because the, pe- the, the steering wheel and pedals no longer move independently of each other. But that's not what we're here for. So you're no longer driving the Wartburg. Uh, no, exactly. So uh, on Sunday, a friend called me. Actually, she called me on Saturday, and she said that, uh, could, could I come and help? She's cleaning out her father's garage. He recently passed, and I think her mother wanted to park in the garage or something. And there's lots of oil and, you know, antifreeze and a lot of chemicals, and we just don't really know what they are or what's dangerous or what's not. Can, can, does oil go bad? Does antifreeze go bad? And I go, well, I mean – it would have to be really old to go bad. So yeah, I could come and take care of that for you and help you organize that because I know you know nothing about cars. Um, so I went there and on Sunday and I was, I was helping and I got pretty much exactly what I expected, which was the typical dab stuff. It's like three quarters full containers of antifreeze and like windshield washer fluid and a a decent amount of oil that I could tell was like 
best intention, I'm going to change my oil. And then it just never really happens. So uh, it, was, it was, you know, a normal thing. And then I, I, I kind of kept going deeper and deeper into the chemical piles. And I found all those other things that dads get that they never finish, like crabgrass killer and roundup. And I'm like, I could use these around the house. And I'm like, you know, basically making two piles, take that to the dangerous chemical recycling, just go ahead and throw this out. No problems. Um, and, and as I got deeper, I discovered a bunch of car parts and, and they told me like, oh, the people who own this pl for us, uh, they used to fix cars in here. So there's some car parts and I can see through it. There's no hidden cars. Don't expect like me to unearth a Lamborghini or anything. Um, but as I was going through and I'm like, everything is like much older now. Now it's like not from the eighties. It's from like the seventies and it's like, Chevy water pumps and, you know, air cooled Volkswagen axle and swing arms, like things I can moderately recognize it. An old Corolla fender, like 1982 Corolla, I don't know, whatever. Um, and as I was getting to the back, I was like, hmm, a Porsche shift knob. Well, that's interesting. You know, that's the kind of thing that people would keep as a keepsake. And I said, hey, can I keep this? They said, yeah, yeah, yeah. Nobody we ever knew owned a Porsche before. And that's when the brother said, hey, you know, there's a bunch of car stuff in the loft too. Does this box look interesting? And he holds out a cardboard box filled with just random little butts and brackets. And what, what does Hamsa call it? Boops and bits? Something like that. Something like that. Rat uh, F it as you dig yeah, through it. Exactly. Uh, it says on the side of it, Porsche 914 parts. And all of a sudden, like the, the record, like slide, the, the needle slides across the record of my brain. It's like, wait a no, minute. Eric. That's what it actually <laughs> did. I think it's kind of, uh, all of a sudden, like my brain goes, I don't think that was air cooled Volkswagen parts. Maybe I should go back and look at that. Uh, so, I didn't even know there was a loft, uh, but I, I kind of like went up the ladder in the loft uh, because what the first thing that came down the rickety ladder was an engine cover to a 914 in lime green, lime green. Uh, so I'm like, well, I, I got to take care of this. I quick make a phone call back and forth with Eric K, the Porsche lover. And uh, it's when my it's about this time that my family says, "Can we go home? You're done picking up the oil, right?" Oh, I didn't realize you brought the whole family. Yeah, like, so they're miss, all sitting in the this. truck waiting for me <laughs> to leave, this. and all of a sudden I'm like, "But, but Porsche parts, <laughs> Porsche that I know a guy who owns one of these." So I basically took them home, went back. Three, three and a half hours later, I have a Nissan Titan overly full with Porsche 914 parts. Um, I, yeah, it's great. The highlights include I got three engine covers, all in different shades of green, uh, a Targa top, a very nice gas tank, two unmatched front seats with pretty good leather on it, uh, a transmission case, an early bumper, and just piles and piles and piles of other random things but those are the highlights wow yeah excellent that's it's, a lot so uh mental has already spoke up he wants one of the engine covers for his for his to, to hang behind him uh i'm definitely going to keep one of the engine covers and maybe clean up one of the seats uh but eric says that they're one of the pieces i have is in uh, like an early bumper chrome bumper and he says that might actually that and the gas tank might actually be worth like the gas that it's going to cost me to drive him down to Virginia. Wow! Yeah, that's okay. it. Cool. End of story. It's very exciting. That was a long story. Fantastic. It was exciting. So, it is. It's unless you were in, unless you were in your truck. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, I, I thought it was interesting that they were all different colors of green. Like clearly the guy like ordered off at Amazon, not that Amazon existed in 1970, whatever the Azori or like, like he called, Whitney. he called all the, he called all the junkyards. He's like, <clears throat> do you have a green Porsche 914 engine cover? And the guy was like, Oh yeah, here's one. Uh, no, it's not the right green. 
Uh, you got another one? Oh, yeah, yeah, I got another one. Here, is it? No, that's not the right green either. Why didn't you just paint it? <laughs> I, I don't know. Paint that back then. Uh, some of them were, one of them was dented. So I assume that was the original color, uh, especially because I found a window frame in the lime green. So, well, it sounds like you had an adventure, and that's yeah. very fun. It was the most exciting car related thing that has happened to me in a long time. Because of COVID. <laughs> what am I else am I doing? Getting the motor out of the Z was pretty exciting. Really? No, you that was frustrating. Oh. You didn't I, explain I like this. You did it. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. It wasn't uh, full of discovery and intrigue. It was like fucked up Z motor. Two hours later, it's half out, fucked up Z motor. And then I got it out, and it was still a fucked up Z motor. So, you know. Fair enough. I don't know. I, Chrissy, what are you working on? I'm sure your story is much more. No, no, it's not. Uh, I spent some time relaxing at the Jersey Shore this weekend uh, for a day. That's that good. Was fantastic. We had a wonderful uh, overnight there. And then I uh, did a lot of yard work when I came home on Sunday. I have helped with uh, the trailer project, which you'll hear about in a little bit. And preparing to send uh, more masks. Oh, my work. I'm, who knows? I don't even know how many thousands of masks, tens of thousands of masks are going out next week. So... Yeah, they keep we keep getting getting them, and they keep going out to our field offices. So that's what I'm doing. Same old, same old. Did trip did you to the like, office? Stay at a commercial establishment or with like friends or something? No, we have a family house down there. Oh, okay. So we just went down to open it opened the house for the year basically. I didn't think anything was open. No, no, there there isn't much. No, actually, we went for a bike ride, and it was great because we uh, rode our bikes across town to go get some seafood. Uh, but we found some roads that there was nobody on, so we were riding next to each other because there was no traffic. So, yeah, no, it was awesome. There's some some things open, but plenty of things that are pre-season. So that's why it's really it was hard to find like takeout seafood because we called probably eight places and nobody's open yet, just because it's early. Oh, yeah. What town were you in? Wildwood. Oh, yeah, yeah. It's tough. That's a much more seasonal town than some of the Absolutely. Others. Yeah, yeah. There's plenty of people there, there, but they know how to live on whatever they live Alcohol. on. Alcohol. Alcoholism. <laughs> Loneliness. <laughs> now, Desolation. Did, did you refresh your alcohol before going over the bridge? Because we know that Maybe. Pennsylvania is still closed, right? Alcohol-wise. Maybe. Well, they're not actually closed, but they're very difficult to get anything. So, uh so yeah, so we yeah maybe we got some stuff. Cool. Yeah. The, the big Vegas chain here will deliver it to your house. Oh. You can get almost anything delivered to your house. Apparently, mental. That's, That's so, I'm like. jealous. In Vegas. Yeah. I'm, you name it. It seems like. That's what, like. C- yeah, they'll deliver that. C- City of Vice. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> all right, I know what Chris is doing. So, mental, what are you doing? Uh, I've actually we're. My days at work are now, even though we're staggered, they're almost full days. I had to like actually stop working and leave to get home in time to do this. I've uh, been doing the yard work and still working on the pathways around the house. Got up early Saturday morning, got to do the C or the um, Charlotte iChamp, iRacing Champ Car event with Dustin, uh, my Fat Crack team buddy. He's out in California, so we were both there up at six in the morning. <clears throat> That's dedication. Okay. What? Oh, no, because they're doing the full up six and eight hour events, even 14 hour events. So you, you, you do, uh, you're, you're swapping out, you're doing driver changes, the whole nine yards. I probably one of the more realistic, uh, simulations of iRacing, right up, you know, you, you've got to get towed, you got points. Uh, if the points are crap, huh? they've got a Google documents you can fill out and you can kind of fight about your, uh, penalty and if you make a legit argument they'll wipe it out the the only thing is we blew two motors and we're in the pits and it would say you know your engine is blown 40 minutes for a repair so we just we go make a sandwich you know grab a cup of coffee come that's back a, you know that, that's the, about right on hey, the take TR a nap seven i think the guys at the tr7 <laughs> they had that down to about 45 minutes didn't they it was on quick releases at that point yeah yeah and uh, uh, he, Lee Merman even got a like a picture of our sad bent Mustang being passed uh, on the highlight reel. It was, it was. A, if you have a chance to do that, you've got to have a Class D license. You can't do it by yourself. You need someone else. And spotting when you're wearing VR goggles, that is the way to go. It is. I would sit. Oh, we haven't chair, done that yet. I would just sit in my chair and do the the. Um, far chase so i was above the car like a drone shot and i could turn around and look behind me and go oh 
There's uh, two Mustangs coming up on you. There, wow. they'll be. It was, so, do you make you really sick? Good. I've been doing it so much, actually. Oh, it's, good. I'm starting to to get used to it. I mean, I can tell. I'll get a little sweaty, and I'll just kind of take them off for a second, watch the screen, then go back to it. Oh, good. Do you so, um? Okay. Do you have any kind of anything on your VR or a different headset? Like after wearing it for an hour, it gets uncomfortable where it kind of is against my face. Do you do anything for that? I, I keep it really loose. Uh, I've been developing a hotspot on my head. So I've taken to just getting a ball cap, put it on my Florida man racing ball cap goes on backwards and I put it on and I just, I make sure it's, it's not as that tied up against yeah. me. Yeah, We're struggling with our face. Here. I, I, I did today look at Amazon for a kind of extra cushier, spot where it rests against your face because also the one that rests against your face now like eventually that's we gotta clean that because it's gonna get gross mm -hmm. so if we have something that's removable and cushier that might be nice there's a million dollar idea right there because uh, i'm sure VR someone else in china has already thought of it so yeah. <laughs> in fact i have one in my amazon cart <laughs> so <I> just... <laughs> head sock like yeah. your regular racing head sock but then i'm just gonna get hot and it's also one. it's not it's not the pressure on our cheeks are the problem yeah like even uh, if you so have it pulled back well, you still it still sits on your face because it's, like, it's, it's, it's heavy. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's a lot of weight. Uh, no, does yours have the Velcro strap? Uh -huh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I've I've been that's what I would wearing the ball cap backwards. I'm trying to transfer most of that pressure up. And yeah, it's disseminated by the ball cap. Yeah, leave the side ones loose. Mm -hmm. I I learned that the last time, but then I really couldn't see. There was it was kind of blurry because it wasn't it was far enough away from my eyes being held up whatever okay anyway we move uh on. you you have to adjust that in your settings because i had a, a similar problem yeah I, I was noticing that like i had set it to my uh bifocals so i could see the gauges really clear and everything was blurry and i'm like well this uh, doesn't work at all i had to recalibrate everything yeah it was interesting because if it moves you know if it moves an inch or t you know not an inch obviously that would be a lot but if it moves a half inch closer or further than your to your eyeballs it would definitely be blurrier. Yeah. Mm -hmm. This is how that. I went on our mm. first race, which we'll talk about. Yes. Yes. Cool. Yeah. So mental, that's crazy. Yeah. It's good. You had a good experience with that. That's fantastic. I, I, I was actually intrigued by the whole, you can still do driver changes. Cause I was like, how do I, if nobody else is in my house, how do they get in my car? <laughs> we do driver <laughs> changes literally from the site. Like, 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 hey, Chris, get in. Yeah, Chris jumps out and you jump in and then you can race. Right. But, yeah. Uh, what you're saying mental is like, you, you told me this, so I'm not, I'm not going to steal your thunder, that you basically, when you escape out in iRacing <clears throat> to get to the like garage screen, it, other people are on your team can then jump in your car. Yes, and the uh, you can assign more than one person as a crew chief, and the crew chief can remove a driver if it's in the pits. So, you know, literally, someone gets, you know, no, no, I'm staying in. No, you ain't. You're screwing this race all up, you know. <laughs> Intriguing. Uh, I'll make no, sure not uh, to have a crew chief if I ever do this, because they'll just yank You me. have to. I'll be like the one. I'll be like one lap. They're like, ah, oh, Wakeman's out. <laughs> yeah, it's true. <laughs> like, well, you, you have to. You have to be in the pits. It's not like this. You know, the Star Trek transporter. Oh, where in the middle of that, it kind of happens every time I crash. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, it's um, and and not to not the various series have gone their different ways, but I think uh, Champ has gone the way of really trying to simulate that event, and it's a it's. I like that. I had a, I had a good time doing it. It's completely different than what lemons is doing. And I like what lemons is doing, but yeah, I've give it a shot. It's fun. Interesting. You mentioned a D what license D license. Mm -hmm. Steve. Yeah. I don't have it. Did you say no, C? No, 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 D you just got to get a D. D okay. Gotta, you said get D. a safety rating of above three, do four races. You're good. Hmm. It's hmm. Jeff. That still might be a challenge. Right. I don't <laughs> Not going to happen. So. <laughs> <laughs> Let's be honest here. Well, okay. Jeff can just spot for us then. <laughs> Good. Yeah, we can do that. Except he can't see peripherally or behind you. Therefore, he's yeah, not exactly. Yeah. That's so he'll have to he'll have to use the cameras and you know go to the front chase and rear chase and stuff. And he'll like see a squirrel and be like, "I gotta go." <laughs> hey, there are nine fourteen parts on Facebook Marketplace. <laughs> <laughs> they don't even have a nine fourteen. <laughs> Doesn't matter. I can, wait, I have one of those in my truck. I could sell that for a dollar. <laughs> All oh. right. Chris, well, you sound like you actually did something. Yeah, I've been working on the trailer more. It's very exciting. I put more, I, all the insulation is in and all the taping is done. So Yay. there's that. Most of the walls are back on. It's just the front, um, 
one panel on each side in the front and the two that are up against the front front bulkhead and then the this and all the ceiling is still off because the walls have to be on for the ceiling to go on um so that's great some of the 110 wiring is run is run the one to the very back outlet is on and the one for the middle outlet is on i just got to put wire up the wire to the front outlet um and yeah have all the bits i think so it's just a matter of putting it together which is which is nice um i've been enjoying E1R i racing on Mondays as a participant. That has been great fun. We'll talk about that later. And I've been really enjoying Lemon's i racing as a spectator with a drink. It's been great. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, had a good time spotting for mental during his uh, drunkathon last time. That was That's that was pretty a good time. awesome. Yeah, you did surprisingly well, this, my friend. I got to yeah. say, <laughs> I'm going to say this sober because I said it while while I was in that race. <laughs> you know, my mentality in that race was, and we'll mentioned this here in a second was just like when you were a teenager and you would come home drunk and you didn't want your parents to know. So just the whole time I'm maintain, man, just be cool, man. Right. And you started getting like a little bit red missy and Chris was like, stop it. Mental. Well, and then, slow, and, slow down. Right, trying to, trying to broadcast it. I, I did a zoom meeting and I've, I, the discord will not work on my headset. Every time I view discord, I have to use my phone. So Chris ends up, uh, talking to me on the Discord, and it was so soothing. It was, you know, he's like mind state awareness. I'm used to being, you know, when I'm trying to do something difficult and it's hot and challenging, and I'm, you know, lend a little over my head, Chris be like, all right, you're doing this, you're doing this, try this in this corner. It was just this primordial for 10 years. I've had Chris in my ear when I'm trying to go really fast. Oh, and it was just this, oh man, yeah, this is so <laughs> soothing. It was like having, like having a bad trip and getting talked down. <laughs> hey, you did a great job you did yeah. way better than i thought you would possibly do or i could possibly do being that hammered <laughs> yeah. so yeah right. i mean you were you're keeping it on track you're only off is really when uh, you got tullied so <laughs> is it <laughs> tullied <laughs> or is it laminoed tully laminoed me yeah yes. that's what i think do we have this in Rona Rona Racing reaction? I think we do. Let's okay, yeah. well, let's, let's Sorry, keep going. Let's, let's, we, have the more, we have the more important part of it on the Rona Racing reaction. Okay, all right. Well, we can. Time. It was a good time. That's what I want to talk about later. Okay, so let's okay. move on to news and notes time. Uh, oh, very, very lyrical lovely. tonight. Yeah. Lovely. Because <laughs> everybody gets mad when I yell, so I won't yell anymore. There okay. you go, Erling. Just for you. Right? It's a little <laughs> it, song it's for like you. A, it's like a Disney introduction. Um, okay, as graduating classes uh, across the United States are inventing new means of honoring their achievements, two high schools in Flagler Cl County, Florida, uh, pu are putting a local landmark to good use. Flagler County, sorry, County, is the home of the now idle Daytona International Speedway, Class 2020, from Mon Montaza High School and then Flagler Palm Co Coast High School. Uh, will ac drive across the finish line at Daytona International and get their diplomas handed to them so cool like That's why cool. not it's so awesome um and ceremonies are scheduled to happen may 31st hat tip to uh, dr florida man for the story story uh link in our show notes that's really fun that's cool uh, i saw and i and i thought it wasn't real so i didn't post it or bring it to the show for notes but i saw a thing that looked like it might have been real from a uh now court ordered closed drag strip that basically said, uh, since we've been closed by the police, we'd like to announce that the snack shack will still be open this Friday night for the usual test and tune growth challenge. Uh, because of social distancing, people who order will have to drive up in their car, drive to the track, make their order at the starting line, and pick it up at the finish line. Is it serious? I didn't know if it was serious is, or was it a joke. Actually, so. It actually is true because they were they were open and they were maintaining social distancing because test and tune nights are, you know, without getting in stands and drinking beer, but the police got them for being a non-essential business. So that's how they, they stepped around it. Yeah. You, Good for them. Chrissy, you get it. You Thank pull you. up to the start line, you order a hot dog, and then you... Quarter of a mile. <laughs> yes. Yeah, no, I, okay. I just wasn't sure if it was real. Like if you, uh, it sounds like a fun thing, it, but. It, so it sounded like the track was making a joke. It didn't sound like the track was serious. But, yeah, but redneck. So, true. You Could know be what? real. It, it, it might as well be real because that sounds like something. Right, 
let's talk real news, real lemons news. Uh, if you paid for a lemons race and have moved your fees to an uncanceled race, check your snail mail. Nick, Jay, and Eric may have sent you something. Uh, everyone, or until they run out, I guess, who moves their fees is receiving patches and a thank you note from Lemon Central. So uh, they have a special commemorative patches that have a like a logo on it that looks like a, a, a it's not the covid biohazard uh, that would be cool like a biohazard symbol and this says in it for the long haul so yeah i don't know what to do with all my lemons patches i mean i've got like 50 of them they're like in a pile and, like and plus the ioes plus the other ones and now this now you're sounding like nice. you're bragging you should stop well, like, I, what do we do with them i can't put them on my suit i won't be able to move like so <laughs> And I'm not going to make like a judge cape out of them. I don't know. I just don't know what to do with them. Yeah. I, I originally was going to sew them to my blue and white blazer that was from the Jaws theme. The beaches are open, Jeff. <laughs> exactly. People Some are having are. a great time. But I, I, I never got around to it. Amity means friendship. That's right. <laughs> Still does. All so. right. Racer rotor reaction time? Yeah. Yeah. Do it. All right, no more news. Last Thursday marked the end of the Lemons' first iRacing season. Did we know the season was going to be this short, or did they just like yeah, call it they in said, the middle? Yeah, they said, we're just going to try this for a little bit, for like a month and see what happens. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Uh, so changes are promised. They're going to launch season two, which I think they've already really most, let most of the cats out of the bag. Uh, but for the final event, Mental drank too much and somehow still drunk enough was able to raise. No, no, I did not drink. I was supposed oh, to. Oh drink more than i drank oh you you were dr you were totally trashed and still didn't get a drink for everybody who donated uh raised over 400 dollars for various charities including lemons of love uh bill fisher of garage heroes in training matched the donation to lemons of love and then found a matching funds charity and they matched it again Wow, that's awesome. So on Giving Tuesday, Lemons of Love raised over $6,000. Not all of that was thanks to Mental's Liver, but the rest of it was. It was all sponsored by Mental's Liver in the start. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's good. So it wasn't just, that wasn't just a total. That's, that is legit from a Lemons people in general. Yes, because I, I, I think just on Giving Tuesday, a lot of people are given, and, and that's like a huge part of their income is they're at the race collecting yep. fines. And then, you know, I mean, you get guys like, um, uh, who are the, the Hearst Cadillac guys, the Limitarians? Mm -hmm. You know, that guy just throws money at every charity he comes across. And there's a, and, there's a lot and of people like that. looking at what he wears, you would think he'd like buy <laughs> new shoes or some. something. <laughs> no, because he gives it to charity so he doesn't find it. <laughs> when so when just, people was... think you look like uh, like Vermin Supreme, <laughs> or they don't know if that's your costume, and they're not really sure whether they're actually talking to Vermin Supreme, you probably need to update your wardrobe. That's all I'm saying. But it was, it's, it was good to see, because I imagine that's got to have a dent in their charitable contributions, because their main source of contributions is not happening and it was just hap i'm happy to see that yeah racers across are stepping up to that that's just nice to see that they're still making the kind of money because that's a good charity you, you don't have like overpaid spokespeople it's just people that actually care about that stuff yeah cool Agreed. and mm -hmm. yes we love you half dan please keep giving money <laughs> <laughs> yep so while we all wait on the latest round of Lemons iRacing Season 2, Eric did announce that the invitation-only Lemons iRacing event on May 7th, which is Thursday. I don't know what day you're listening, but it's Thursday, May 7th. It's a race only for those using iRacing controls that are not a purpose-built set of pedals and a steering wheel. So it's inspired by some of the more creative control inputs being utilized, like Troy Frew's wired Etch-A-Sketch driving his amazing. race car. Or he Crazy. had the... Dance Dance Revolution pad that he was oh, doing for a yeah. while. Um, other entries so far from Eric. There's an aircraft sim setup. Rudder pedals to steer. Throttle for brake and throttle. And air brake to shift. That's great. When do you use the flaps? Um, a real actual bicycle where you pedal constantly for throttle. Your handbrake is your brake and you steer by steering the bike. With shift levers on the shift handles. Who has time to make these things? I guess if you're I, out I of work. These or if you don't, don't have and, jobs. And if you don't I have guess. any money. If you want yeah. to iRace and you don't have any. No, no. This is costing them money. Because yeah. they have iRacing controls. They're just choosing. 
yeah. to build something right, okay. weird. Like it's Troy, one thing if... I think Troy's pedals actually broke, so that's why he got out the DDR pad. Yeah. Okay. All right. So hey, that etch a sketch though. Apparently, it was a five dollar etch a sketch, an eleven dollar Arduino, two three dollar potentiometers. The left knob is brake for left of center, and throttle for right of center. The right knob, <laughs> the right knob is steering. And Troy said that these potentiometers are endless spin, so if it goes past the edge, the input is instantly opposite. So, oh it, no, it, is it one of those full, things like it goes off to like, one side and then comes back the other? Yeah. So if you're yeah. at full throttle, you're 98, 99, 100 percent throttle. If you go no, one more zero. click, it's 100 percent braking. It's the other side. <laughs> oh. oh, oh. <laughs> That's going to be great. I'm so yeah. glad I'm watching this one. Oh, Are you like watching? Said, I've it... been having a great time watching these. With they the sh- stream them on Facebook. On YouTube. Uh, on YouTube. Go, yeah, I'm sorry. Go to their YouTube Facebook. channel. I wasn't and sure if they it, did all of them. It's always late. Just expect that. And mm-hmm. uh, uh, So I'm just thinking back to the days when I was drawing on an Etch-A-Sketch. Like, I knew I had to go up. <laughs> Like I knew I wanted the cursor to go up, but it would take me like one whole minute to remember if it was this one or this one. Even if I was like constantly drawing, if I wanted to change sides. I'd be like, okay, wait, 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 which one is it? Which one is it? This is your, it's the, definitely this one. And then have, I would turn it and it would go the other way. You have this problem with eye racing. This was your, pe- <laughs> this is your pedal problem. I'm like, this is serious. <sighs> It's the, it's the same problem. We're, fi- we're finding Jeff's hidden dyslexia. Right? It's, it's so. terrible. It's not hidden dyslexia. I've been dyslexic since I was 12. It's well, since thing. I was born, but, you know, I've been diagnosed dyslexic <laughs> since 12. Uh, yeah, but I'm serious. Like, I would sit there with the Etch-A-Sketch, and I'd be like, okay, go left, go left, go left. Eat right! This is you and I racing. Uh-huh. Go here. This has nothing <laughs> to do with I racing. <laughs> It's, it's the post-it notes on your TV for which is upshift and which is downshift. That's true. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. This is why yeah. I'm telling you this. All right. I fixed okay. that. So some other good ones. Someone had a 15-inch laptop with a USB-plugged PS4 controller on his kid's IKEA table painted to look like Road America along with Legos and toy cars and breakfast. So he's um, playing at his kid's yep, table. Yep. <laughs> Daddy's using this one now. Um so you enter the event by emailing virtually slow at 24 hours com, describing your setup, and, but pictures and videos, they go a long way. Because if your thing is crazy enough, you need a picture or a video to understand how it works. Really. I, I think the greatest thing, I don't know how many people have watched the replays, but uh, Judge Phil and Eric were obsessed with people driving weird controllers. So they would follow them in the race. And if yeah. you're using a controller that has you know, only off and on for left and right. They would go to the cockpit view <laughs> and watch it go like, eh-oh, eh-oh, eh-oh. like they would drive around the turn, literally like the steering wheel is at zero, 90%, zero, 90%, zero, 90%. Yep. It's even more funny listening to two of them go down a rabbit hole about 80s <laughs> Soviet area behind the Iron Curtain, uh, you know, atmospheric metal bands. Cause sure. You know, they just, oh, well, then their second album. <laughs> yep. Totally. <Thanks. laughs> All right, who's talking about Taco Tuesday? Uh, so the cruelest of fates, as you already know, fell upon us when Taco Tuesday fell on Cinco de Mayo and we were all stuck at home. Uh, it was also Giving Tuesday. And thanks to former guest Cal Denisi from Extreme Experience, uh, I managed to get into a, an iRace. I could list all the names, and it's all people that Jeff's never heard of. He'll say he's never heard of, and then he'll accuse me of being a name dropper. But this was an extensive <laughs> list of people. I believe I'm the one living. who recognized at least the people that we have interviewed. <laughs> This, this is this is a check for a mental got something right. It's true. Yeah. So it's 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 a whole list of people that make their living driving race cars. Uh, we had a bunch of practices. Then there were two qualifying races, and I finished outside of those. And then they literally had the last chance qualifier. You had to finish fifth. I was in a battle right up until the next to last turn where I got tangled up with a Ferrari and it was who could get reverse quicker and get going and uh, managed to get across there. So I was way, way out of my element. I spent an unhealthy amount of time practicing just to not embarrass myself. And along comes the first race and turn one, I embarrass myself. I go right off, lock them up, go into the wall, spend the whole time in the pits. Uh, Tyler Hoffman had actually helped coach me through this. I 
been getting up early in the morning, trying to get around this track quickly and learn some stuff. The second race kept my nose clean, didn't finish dead last. While most Yay. important is during this particular thing, it was the COVID aid, donate to COVID aid charity. I, I was watching uh, Mikey T, Mikey T Racing. He's a, a, a professional IMSA guy, and he also runs a, a mar motorsports marketing business. And they were doing commentary. So I was checking in, listening to them as they took over the race. The charity was just about 300000 By the time we finished the second race, they had raised over uh, – $50,000 just watching this I race. The entire COVID aid it itself raised uh, $370,000 to help frontline workers and Boys and Girls Club of America. Wow. That's pretty cool. That's a lot, which mm -hmm. is great. Did you have fun? Excellent. Oh, well, the second race I did, the first race, I just sat there and fumed while oh. I sat in the pits and waited for my car to fit. And God, you're, you're one chance. All you had to do was not be an idiot, and you were an idiot. <laughs> race, I, uh... I'm sorry. Oh, that, yeah. that never happens. Yeah. <laughs> happens hey, uh, I have some hot breaking news. Do -do 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 Fresh on the wire as okay. we are recording, uh, AER has just announced that it is about to start its second season of iRacing. Uh, yeah. We've already mentioned them that they just completed their first series, uh, first season, and that several people, including several of the people who helped found. AER were thrown out for not being good enough drivers or <laughs> uh, hot off the presses. John Colesa said the next season of AER I racing championship starts on Monday at spa Franco Champs. Uh, if you were removed from the league for the last race of the last season, you're welcome to rejoin. So they're going to try and open the doors a little bit again. And so if you were uh, already deemed a butthole, by iRacing AER, you got a chance to redeem yourself. They assume that this time off has m made you regain your expertise. I guess. Oh, yes. <laughs> I guess. I guess. Okay. I, I, you know, I'm going to give them props, though, if they're subjecting themselves to the same standard. Like, it might be an unachievable standard, but they're making sure everybody has to meet that standard. Hey, it's my series, and I'm an idiot, so I'm kicking myself out. Good on them. So, consistency. I, I, I have to say that they just have a different attitude and design and that's why we're glad that AER is there because sometimes we want to be serious and some of us want to not be so there it is that's when you can drive with your etch-a-sketch yes <laughs> <laughs> the guitar hero was my favorite the guitar yeah. hero controller that's crazy okay hot off the heels of their previous success radwood is holding another virtual car show this may 30th watch for details and updates following radwood on facebook insta and twitter uh it happened did anybody see it oh yeah oh I looked they had at awards it. and everything. They had best costumes, all that stuff. Watch it. They they mm. uh, they're big on Instagram. So watch. Uh, they'll, they'll announce all the awards Insta, on Instagram. Insta what? Yeah, Insta. Insta. Yeah. Oh, I never opened Insta. She's yeah. she's reverting. She was so I know, right? So into Instagram after yeah. you are that you're that's a thing. All right. Anyway, I should get back on there. That um, was the weekend I pulled the motor. I think or no, I did something of the Z because I was really greasy and, it, and I I wanted to post stuff, but my hands were too dirty, so I didn't. <laughs> car working problems uh all right so in an e email this morning the lemons race at thunder hill for the end of may has been canceled uh oh, so by the time oh, yeah, yeah right by the time we finally return back to the track uh even our hopes that you have you are tiger king and murder hornets oh my god it's like oh themes do it uh i hate this thought of these things Murder hornets? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, I don't like little bees. <laughs> I don't like the little, little bees. Oh, the little bees are the worst. I know they are. You okay. don't see them coming. I just added this. Lastly, uh, we're not racing, but we, should, we, we wish we could watch some live. If you haven't seen Formula One Drive to Survive, it's awesome. Have you seen it? I haven't watched it yet. Oh my God, it's so good. No, no, don't be sorry. No, no, we're watching. It's, it's really good cinematography, engaging information. It's more than just racing, but it has racing too. Really, really good if you haven't seen it. There's two seasons. I'm, heard, I'm hearing wonderful stuff about it, and I'm still watching Tiger King. It's our workout show. It's been great. Like, it keeps I, your inner, keeps you, like, that half hour goes by. Yeah. I just, and, uh, I just finished Tiger King on my workout show. Is your brain liquid? Yes. I think I can it, see it I think I can see great. through your head. It wasn't as great air. as everybody said. Uh and I'm very excited to get back because I'm doing Westworld on HBO next. So Okay, well if you want to watch some racing, 
you can turn on any episode because you don't really need to follow the story, but um, start at the beginning. I highly suggest it. All right. E1R iRace recap. Haven't we been talking about iRacing the whole time? Yes, because there is no real racing. <laughs> so we do. Uh, so uh, we did uh, figure eights at Irwindale this weekend or this Monday. Uh, for those of you who don't know, we do our own invitational slash invite yourself. Uh, so sorry, Eric, we used race controls. Uh, even though my greatly improved, somewhat bolted down system was ready, I still don't have peripheral vision. So I was a total menace on the figure eight because <laughs> you kind of need to look left and look right to know how to cross the center. We laughed so much. It was pretty funny. It I'm, was really I, funny. I nearly fell out of my chair at some point. Yes, but there was a huge battle between whoever didn't crash as much, and it really came down to mental amino, and it, it really did become a, um, we were pitting each other, we was, if you, if you ran through the, the uh, figure eight part at the wrong time, there'd be just pileups, the spotter couldn't keep up fast enough to be able to, like, car on your left, car on your right, to, car slow, car high, stopped, car high, low, car high low. right, and you're like, is it dead, is it Jeff? It Is didn't it? matter. <laughs> it didn't matter. By the way, if you're running a figure eight and you have no peripheral vision, you have just as much chance of getting through than if you do have it. I don't agree. Like, I had plenty of times where literally, I, oh, Chris was probably watching me. I moved up in my seat. I looked to the side before I went through the, before the through, because yes. I could, I have peripheral vision. So I can see, so I would slow down or I would be gassing, look over here to see who's coming. I would either let off, could break if I thought that they were going to come through. I mean, that's how, I think that's how you win. There's yeah, plenty of times I went through and I would see like a flash of a car, like right in front of me or right behind <laughs> oh, me. Oh, yes. There's that. that happened. I definitely would have not gone through if I knew that car was coming. Pretty much. Now, goggles, are the, goggles are the way to go because you could, you could tie, like, as you hit the apex of the turn to enter the center part of the I was eight, looking. You, you look up and, all right, uh, I'm going to hold off on that throttle for just Absolutely. a second. Absolutely. And I think that's yeah. why Lomino did so well because he's got three screens. Three yes. screens. Uh, yeah, he said he I mean, never I used do. them as much as ever yes. as I did that one night. <laughs> It was a lot. Uh, I got to get two more screens. <laughs> Just get good with the one you have first. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> you, <laughs> uh, well, but uh, I have to say this, this race, because I raced this one and then Chris took over. Uh, I was so sick because I kept getting hit. Every time your, oh. your body would jostle, right? Or you would think you're jostling and you're sitting in your seat. That's the stuff that makes me sick. So if you yeah. spin, I, I expect to be spinning, but I'm sitting in my chair. So for how long we go? 30 minutes? 40 minutes? I was about it was that, 30, yeah. It was 40 minutes. It was so like, we long. Had to go get fuel. Yeah. <laughs> so after 40 minutes of crashing every other time, spinning out, I, w I was like, I'm going to barf. I was, I was so sick. It was the most fun race I've ever had in iRacing. Totally. Racing. Totally. totally. And I can say that, you know, when for about the spinning thing, if you get... If you hit something or get hit in a regular eye race, you're generally both going in the same direction, unless I'm hitting you. Um, but in this, you're hit like totally broadside or so at one point somebody's going the wrong direction. I mean, it was just crazy, crazy. Well, I didn't like the second race as much, but I have a feeling that Eric or that uh, Chris and, and Mental did. Uh, we did a dirt oval at the fake, not real Lanier. track. Was it Lanier? Lanier? I thought Lanier. we did it at USA. No, no. I was in Georgia. Lake, uh, Lake Lanier, right across the street from Road Atlanta. So Okay, so it yeah. wasn't Lanier. Uh, we, did, we first tried with Beatles and stadium trucks. The Rallycross Beatles. The Rallycross Rally Beatles. Turbo. They yes. were fantastic. They were so much fun. And then they all ran out of gas because you can't fuel them because they don't expect you to run long races in it. So we started again and we all did stadium trucks and I could not get that thing to go around that circle. To Mental save. was the pro. He Mental had the, was good. His redneck roots were you're showing. Ah. He had a V8 and a truck and a dirt track and he uh, was just hanging Alex, that thing out. It was who, great. Who ended up winning? Was it Alex or was it Dave? Uh, I, th I think Dave may have gotten him. Or like if, if, if it was Alex, they were... They were seven yeah. laps above and, everybody else. And Dave deliberately pulled himself to the back of the pack to make himself go through the pack. Because he's that kind of guy. Right? Yeah. yeah. 
it's it's that was once you kind of got it up on the cam and on the high line there and got the rhythm to carry the drift so you could do consistent like low 19s and i i get it every once in a while and like mental you and i ran a few laps just right net nose to tail in which the drifts were perfectly like next to each other oh yeah we would have been right at grid life we'd have been like oh, yeah. you know, <laughs> yeah. I, I and, did that once with metal I, in the beetle but in the stadium truck i had no abilities yeah. and then i rolled it and then rolled it again and <laughs> rolled it again we kept going by you going yeah. chris you're on your roof you know that yeah. <laughs> chris you need you need to get hit you need to get back little, on little, little help guys little help <laughs> uh i racing is fun if you're screwing around so again you guys heard how much fun we have Get a hold of us on any of our social media. What, uh, what, what are we doing this Monday? Do we have an idea? We don't. We try yeah. and do it. Uh, we try and do at least one race that is tune up for the lemons race. So we they're try going, and do the same track. They're going to Laguna. The the regular lemons race is not part of their season, but they're doing Laguna tomorrow. Well, tomorrow we would be what, doing what it for next, the week yeah. after. So yeah, if they yeah. announce the race, we will mimic that race. If they don't announce the race, we'll do something fun. Well, right? The, the next, the next ones they have coming up are Thursday the sets tomorrow. That's the Gladiator race. Um, Tuesday the twelfth, they're doing Trash Racing Tuesdays at TBD. So we don't know. Thursday is at Charlotte Roval. That's their normal Thursday sprints. So we could run Charlotte. We could run Never Charlotte. Run. Yeah. Absolutely. We'll run Charlotte. We'll, we'll, we'll probably run uh, the, I did the lemons practice last night and all it was stadium trucks and dirt stalkers and you couldn't modify any of them. And Excellent. at 27 miles an hour in exiting pit lane, I put the dirt soccer on its roof. Nice. It rolled. Yeah. The dirt stalkers have become a problem if you're not allowed to change the suspension. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I managed just... to get, I, I settled into a lap and got a lap around it, but yeah, it's challenging. Yeah. Let, oh. If you want to race with us, email us, text us. We'll give you the password. Four letters long. It helps you slow down your race car. You figure when, it out. when do we do this race, Jeff? When do uh, we- Mondays, every Monday, 9 p.m. Eastern, because that's where most of us live. That's it. Yep. But we have a few people in the West, and that's why we made it so late. Yeah. So. Listener feedback time. David Eccles said we had a great live episode last week and giant Dave also expressed his enjoyment saying great episode. Indeed. Hashtag hobo living hashtag for life. I'm just going to add a yo on there. <laughs> yes, Jeff. Uh, I actually spoke to giant Dave uh, just today via AOL mess. Not AOL. She's not AOL chat. It's like, does that exist? <laughs> Facebook messenger. Yeah. An ICQ. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> ICQ. <laughs> Loved ICQ. I we were on a we were on a BBS talking yeah. about Dungeons and Dragons. <laughs> ICQ. Hello. Where are you go? Hello. Anyway, um, so Giant Dave mentioned that he didn't really mean to make all of his tips about the hobo life, but he totally sees where we were going. So <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna suggest that Dave has another name. We call him Transient Gentleman Dave. Transient gentleman. I okay. uh, say hobo Dave as a as a you know rolls off the tongue easy, but transient gentleman Dave. It's a little more accurate because Dave, yeah. yeah. Dave is a complex character, and if you yeah. guys aren't following Caddy Wrecker on Instagram, you are missing some yeah. good recipes because that dude can cook. Yeah, he he's basically deciding whether he's going to live the rest of his life on the road right now or still continue making condo payments. And uh, it, his world was work from home before work from home became cool. So yeah. as long as you have an internet connection, why not live on the road? Yeah. Well, and, and, and I do like, I like you included gentlemen because that does describe him. Yeah, totally. <laughs> yeah. All right. Uh, to get back to our other feedback. Um, while Chrissy was posting her obligatory yard work and beer photo, because it took a long time to mow the lawn this week, that's for sure. I wasn't taking a, pictures the whole time, though. I know. But it, uh, anyway, she asked a, a much more pressing question. Why you- rush the lawn, though? You have nothing to come back in the house for. I do, because I, I had to go to the trailer eventually. Oh. <laughs> oh. Uh-huh. Okay. Yep. Anyway, instead of what you're working on. Because no one's really doing anything. It's what you're drinking. So even though right after she took the picture, she promptly knocked her beer over. So that was a <laughs> So Dr. Florida man had an old St. Pete rum with some pineapple juice. That sounds 
terrible, and That's I like rum. That's very Florida. I have yeah, to try that. Uh, Randy Bish, uh, discerning imbiber, mentioned it's approaching 80 degrees in Detroit, so the mojito is about to make an appearance. Uh, mm. There you go. Excellent. Our mint plant is looking looking bushy these days. we got to start picking at it. Jackie K said she was packing and enjoying a ha- hazy days. That's good. Corey D was having a silver bo- course light because he feels like he deserves punishment, apparently, or that might explain his obsession with Malaysia-era GM stuff. Um, Sean R., a friend of mine from work, had a schmooze passion guava, but warned the heartburn later is going to be stuff fierce. was thick. It yeah. was, he had it in a cup, and it was thick. It takes dedication nice. to drink guava juice. Yeah, well that yeah, that's why you have one. <laughs> that's yeah. Uh, Luke A is drinking Mountain Dew as usual. Hopefully, there were some Doritos following that up. <laughs> <laughs> and Fortnite. Uh, yep. And Matt F started with water, but finished with Weyerbacher blithering, blithering idiot red wine ale. That's good. And if hey, if you're ever up near in northeastern Pennsylvania, you can stop by Weyerbacher Brewery. Christine and I did one day. It was good. And there's a taco place about two miles away too. That was excellent. Awesome. Uh, we think, we need to update the bingo card and add tacos. We had a lot of taco talk recently. Well, it's because it was Taco Tuesday. Uh, we and talk tacos who, a lot. Who doesn't like tacos? I, I, I have a taco shirt on. Terrorists. <laughs> All right. Uh, we usually close this section with a hello to my mom, uh, better known as Chrissy's mom. But we will uh, we will continue and wish happy birthdays belated now to the better part of garage heroes in training, Vicky Fisher, another great pit mom. Woo, woo. Happy birthday. Happy Hi, birthday. Chrissy's mom. Bye. Topic time. Are we going to talk tacos again? That was no. awful. No. Are tacos, tacos going to come do. up at all on this main topic? They're hard to yes. do to race. I think I wrote it once, but I don't think I. Actually, they they're are. not. They're not. No, they're not. The uh, when I run with the the Inglorious Bastards, we one of the guys we call him Taco Blake. He owns two taco shops, and we have great tacos at uh, most races that I run with those guys. Really good ones. You, you can do it. But anyway, it's just, it's who's going to all ahead of time? It's all about we'll the talk prep. About that. Exactly. All right. So uh, I'm here in Vegas. I met up with an old buddy of mine. He came into the office and it uh, took him a second. We realized we were both together in Abu Dhabi. He's an old school gearhead. He's a, a, an air racer. So like the Reno air races and stuff like that. Ooh, he's, that's fun stuff. Yes. Yes, it is. And he's. How does he walk with the balls that big? <laughs> <laughs> oh, Oh, clang, that's, that's not clang, clang. All right. So, so Skins is a, a recent listener and uh, he'll, he'll appreciate that joke uh, tomorrow. Um, so he's, but he's wanting to get into wheel to wheel racing. And we start talking about races and uh, just, he's a, a, a motocross guy for years. And we talking about there's new teams. They always seem to focus on going fast. Oh, we got all the suspension. We got all this. And they miss all the other stuff like a big radiator and, you know, where are we going to sleep and who brought the tools and that kind of stuff. And one of these that you're talking about is food. And we've all seen teams roll up with a case of water and two bags of chips. And I'm going to say just, that's a sucker's bet. Now I had a thing on nutrition, but apparently you get, you're getting really far away from your mic again. We don't want to talk about nutrition, but you've got to keep your energy up in the car and you've got to do that with food. And if you don't, eat right or at least eat you're going to get groggy you're going to make a mistake and at the speeds that all of these races are going that's that's dangerous you might miss a problem with a car you're not paying attention to a gauge you don't hear a noise or you notice that it's pushing in certain corners and you're making something worse so i want this part you we're going to give you a lot of advice but think beyond the finger quote continental breakfast at your trackside hotel and drive throughs yes so we're going to talk totally. about uh, so we're going to talk about food, but we're also going to talk about prep. So, and kind of, we did talk, we did talk about this in a couple of races ago, oh, excuse me, a couple episodes ago, probably early on before the hundreds. Um, but we're going to talk. This was, ab- wasn't this like in, like in our first 10 episodes that we did this? We did. It was, maybe so. Yeah. It so hopefully maybe you didn't listen to that one or you don't remember, or you're really trying to, in, you're interested in upping your pit game this time. That's what we're going to talk about. 
Please don't go back and listen to episode six. <laughs> no, 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 don't. Because I'm just going to tell you all the stuff that we're going to do now. Uh, yeah. And then we can talk a little bit. And I hope you guys interject about the actual food. Um, but we're going to talk about prep first. So this, this is, I have two prefaces here. This assumes you want to go the 3 p.m. route of dining. So many teams are fine with providing cereal for breakfast, family type dinner, and that's it. Or not even that. And it also assumes that you're staying at the track all weekend, not leaving for anything for more than parts or drinks. Okay. So those two prefaces. And if you uh, don't care, then this is not for you. So we're going to talk about pre-event prep. So consider all these things, how many people are coming, food issues, which is your glutenoids and such, uh, weather of the race, uh, potential location of your paddock, which is including how much space you have. Do you have elect- access to electric uh, and those kind of things. So weather of the race matters because we try to have chilly when it's 97 degrees outside. So that's what I'm talking about why the weather is important. Oh yeah. Good point. Right. So, okay. And then my next point is do as much as you can at home. So do as much prep as you can. Uh, I have to say, this is one of uh, Jeff's most brilliant ideas. Uh, I was breaking eggs on the grill one by one, bring a whole 18, maybe 24, maybe more eggs. Just breaking them right at the thing. He says, why don't you do that at home? So now I break all my eggs at home. I scramble them and I put them in jars and we save all of our, uh, Salsa jars. jars. Salsa jars. Thank you. Salsa jars. And we put them in and I write how many is on there and we use them throughout the whole weekend. Throw the wood jar away. Do you know you looked at your kitchen? You were like, uh, what kind of food was that? And you looked right at your kitchen. Thanks. <laughs> Go ahead, Mental. Also, the, you've got the egg beaters and various just egg whites or whole eggs, things like that. Comes in a milk carton. Mm-hmm. And if you're flying into a race, it's something you can pick up when you're driving the rental car on the way to the track. Same result. You don't have to deal with delicate eggs. Or if that's what you want, you should just tell the person that's prepping your food that that's what you would like. And it will be provided for you. Assuming they, provide, they have that kind of service. You know, not everyone sure. has laundry service and meal service. And, <laughs> and, and transport transports to your clean race suit <laughs> yep. to, the, uh, to the track. Yep. Okay. And the other thing uh, somebody added here, uh, park cooking and bacon. Another huge thing that we started doing. We buy all the bacon ahead of time. We buy pretty good stuff just because we like it. And uh, yeah, and we um, I looked at the kitchen again. Um, I- <laughs> <laughs> We we cook it all until it's like half cooked, and then we the cook it the rest of the time on the griddle. Now it's I have to say, faster. I'm not sure we were doing that at show ten because that's a recent no. addition, right? Yeah, no, not at all. Much um, faster, much yep. easier. Yep, we put this is a it great in, tip. Ingredients, so we do it because I like mine less cooked. So we do them and have some more, some less. Uh, usually because we forget a pan when we start leaving, but or see, start doing stuff. Uh, but that's a really good tip as well. Uh, and even if you have this designated person that you think is going to handle the cooking or whatever, and they're just like not driving, they get roped into other things. So it uh, sucks to cut stuff up. You probably can't wash your hands and food at the track, and so just do it as much as you can at home. And uh, this also may depend what you're going to cook depends on what you have, what items you have to cook it with. So we uh, used to just have a cooktop. Uh, I think we now, I think Greg's Grill has the, the grill to go on top. So depends on how you want to do it. If you don't have a griddle, then you're going to have to figure out how to, how to cook, your, cook your breakfast that way uh, in a large crock pot. And, and I want to say that like the flat top, you know, it's made by Blackstone. It's a, you know... It, so much easier than having pots and pans that you need to to wash and and it folds up and it folds up yeah the the flat top in general is like the the swiss army knife of like do it all cook at the track things because you can make your eggs on the griddle you can put a pot of water on it to boil it'll still boil it takes a little longer you can cook your burgers on it you cook everything on it and then it's not terrible to clean up like the like the grill top what everything drips through and then you got to deal with all that stuff later although i will say plenty of people successfully deal with the grill you know they just kind of like stand it in the back of the pickup truck a la uh, uh, sorry for party. Yeah, right. And then they just cook every everything has to be grill worthy. Then right, you have to design your menu around it. Go ahead, Mental. I'm sorry. On a smaller scale, if you don't have that big of a team, uh, you can also they have those plug-in griddles, and it's a, a, the same effect. It's a 110 volt plug-in griddle, and you can uh, run those, and those will fit in you know the trunk of your car. True. Mm-hmm. They got that George Foreman from your parents' basement and. 
or your yes. opinion that the KitchenAid panini maker that your family member bought you and you don't use it because you don't make paninis all the time, but it's a flat, nope. it's a flat grill if griddle if you need to. Yep. Anyway, throw that throw that in a Rubbermaid track container. Yep. Well, we're getting there. Okay, so we're going to talk about the food to actually have the track. So I'm just going to let you guys interject wherever. Uh, we'll talk about each part. So basically, you have to figure out how many meals you are going to have to prepare. Uh, one tip is that if you're going to arrive on Thursday and you're not really sure when your friends are going to arrive, just consider takeout. So we uh, typically stop at a pizza place, get a couple pizzas, and then we eat, uh, people eat it as they get there, um, and we just have some food around. So that's usually typically what we do on Thursday, but just make sure you plan on, um, nope, you, whoever's typing is above the uh, where, we're, where we're talking. Um, so we are, and I already wrote it. It's, it's down there. Just wait, just wait a second. You need to read the notes. Um, okay, so so <laughs> breakfast. Let's talk breakfast. And we're building the plane as we're flying it here tonight. If you just read the notes, you would know. Just ignore me and keep going. Okay, <laughs> breakfast. Go uh, behind the curtain. We, <laughs> we have... Uh, we basically have a thing called uh, we have the best pancakes in the whole world uh, and with assorted meats uh, and some eggs for the glutenoids for two of the days of three breakfasts uh, and the other one we usually have a breakfast casserole for Saturday morning because it ends up being crazy at the start of the race everybody's running around it's easy to be able to walk away with a bowl of stuff that you don't have to worry about getting all the different parts it stays warm all that good stuff um, breakfast why well, you while you're going through that, so when you're thinking about this, think about, because you're talking about planning your meals, know your teammates, know your nutrition. It's going to break down into, we, I'm not doing the slim good body food pyramid here, but think it, about it in terms of proteins, carbs, and then uh, the, you know, your vitamins and vegetables and things like that. And these, even if you're not a, if you're a carb averse person, you might want to think about actually loading up on some carbs because where carbs turn into a problem is when you have a very sedentary lifestyle. And if you're doing a race weekend, even half right, it's not sedentary. You're hopping all weekend and you need to keep your energy up. Carbs are good if you're moving and working out. Mm -hmm. As long as you get the right kind of carbs that you can actually ingest on like, you know, and, and that's, that's, uh, there's that, glutenoids that, out there who can't have all yeah. those kinds of carbs. And I, I, I back off a lot of wheat stuff, but that breakfast casserole is the bomb. You there's get no that on your... Okay, there you go. That is a that is a fantastic way just to get some good ready energy. It's going to carry you through the whole day. I love that thing. Yeah, I'll, leave, I'll, I'll go back after everyone's had like their helping, and I know that everyone's done, and I'll even eat like the crusty bits. Scrape the, the crusty bits. <laughs> Lots of hot sauce. <laughs> here's the, here's the quick recipe for it, in case you're all hungry and want to know, and or you want to make it, uh, make it on Friday night. Like you make it in a couple of days and then cook it on low all night and it'll be ready for your family on Saturday morning. So you could do that and not have to cook on Saturday morning. Anyway, it is uh, frozen hash browns. You can use whatever kind of org of amount you want because I just kind of dump it all in. So uh, frozen hash browns. That's kind of the filler, depending on how much volume you really want to have. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it's good in there because it kind of makes it makes it makes it more substantial. Uh, a whole bunch of eggs, a whole bunch of cheese, whatever kind you want, shredded. And uh, we put sausage. Probably could put bacon, but we usually just cook a, a, a you know roll of Bob's Ev Evans or two of sausage. I think that's it. Yeah. A little so bit of milk, cook, maybe, but like we cook the sausage ahead of time, and we yes. make sure the cheese is shredded ahead of time, yes. and everything's ready. So when you're ready, to eggs do are this, done. Fried, eggs are fried, beat, beaten. Yep. Mm -hmm. Exactly. So Friday night, when you're ready to do this, even half in the bag, you can you can pour all this stuff into the crock pot and put it on low, and in the morning, everyone's loving it. Yeah, crock pots are great, great attachments. Go on, Chrissy. I don't want to steal your thunder. No, it's a problem. No, but this is, uh, it's a really good, it ends up being really good, especially for Saturday mornings. So that's when we usually do it. Uh, lunch, I have minimal things here other than crock pot meals uh, are like almost a must. Basically, we make them in a frozen plastic gallon bag. I think this is what Chris was saying. We, uh, when we cook it, put it all in the fro frozen a gallon bag and lay it down flat on top of something in your freezer. So if it's on a slab of something, if it's on the bottom, if it's on something, but make sure that it's not wrinkled. If it's flat, then you can stand them all up at, or lay them all down and it packs really nicely. Um, so then once you are going to eat them, you drop them in a large crock pot with a liner. Crockpot liners will save your life. They will, they don't melt. They never have melted. So don't worry about that, but they're how, amazing. How do it work? 
don't care. It's and a is plastic it, bag that right? doesn't melt in the and heat. It might be leaching our, into our food, but Reynolds thought it was safe enough, so we use them. But uh, it's fantastic. So and it makes your cleanup so much easier. Put it on high. Get someone to stir it halfway. Uh, get your, here you go, accoutrement out. Uh, if, <laughs> uh, if it's still, uh, and if I, I figure, get it all out. People eat whenever they want to eat. Uh, they know that there's crockpot me- meal waiting for them. If it's two to three and nobody's eaten it, I clean it up and say, you missed it. Sorry about that. Um, go ahead, Chris. I just, I think that's really the, the important part of it, is just leave it out for a time because everyone during Saturday and you're racing all the lunches, either you're racing, you're fueling something. You can't just get everybody together. Say, well, lunch is hot. You got to eat it now. It's got to be something that's going to be out and ready for a long time. So people can eat it as they have the opportunity to do so. So I think it's excellent. I think sometimes we've had a problem finding other things like we crockpots in, imply that there is hot food. Uh, so it's hard to sometimes find when it's 97 degrees out and you are sweating in the shade to find those meals. But you all, that, on that point, you can't leave a sandwich on the on the counter waiting for people to eat it and hope that they do. You can't leave it from nine to two or three when you think somebody's going to eat it. So crockpots really are the answer in this. We've food pretty safety, well with- Jennifer, right? thanks you for it. Right. We've done sandwiches pretty well. Like the really like Thompson, we usually do sandwiches for lunch one day. And we'll all, some of us will sit in the RV and just make a ton of sandwiches and wrap them in tinfoil lightly and put them in a cooler. Uh, yeah, like own, it just own separate cooler. Though. Right, right, right. Because if they, everybody that stands like the refrigerator, which happens in my paddock all the time, people sit with the, the cooler open and they're looking for something or nothing and they're letting all the cold air out. Or sitting on the damn cooler. Get your ass up. Someone needs a beer. <laughs> see, sitting, sitting on the cooler ensures that the greatest sin of coolers doesn't happen, which is shutting the cooler and not closing the cooler. Oh. So yeah, you, know, you got like the, the, the lid is kind of sitting there like yeah. that. And everything else oh. crappy in there. A skew. Like, all, you, all you have to do is go. Ugh. Very, very, very fortunately, we have the uh, body size cooler. So that doesn't usually uh, happen too much because there's usually plenty of worm in there. Uh, and lastly, dinner, we usually, uh, we basically always do a family style. We all eat together, uh, no matter how late, no matter what's working, we ring the dinner bell, we yell, uh, our favorites are warp burgers and, uh, sauteed veggies. Uh, we've had a taco bar. This is where I, I talked about tacos. Uh, but I want Jeff to talk about some of his favorite dinners cause he usually helps me with dinner. Uh, and then Greg does too. So should I jump down to the dinner stuff? Let's yeah, just deal, g- give me, hold on, give me one okay, second. Go on. uh, it, don't forget Sunday dinner. So even if we eat late, even if you eat late, it sucks to leave the track and then have to go find dinner. So even if you're done by four, off the track by five, you're still cleaning. Uh, we always make sandwiches or something like that so you can make sure that you have something while you're walking around. Now I'm done. Cool. I'm going to talk Saturday dinner. Please. Well, because well, before, before you get there, I want to go t- add on to what Chrissy said about Sunday on the way out. Whatever else you have around, pack snacks for your drivers and people on the way home. Chrissy always leaves a little bag of cookies that her mom has made in everyone's car on the way home. So they have snacks. And it's lovely when you're halfway home and you have a snickerdoodle. It's great. At at least once a year, I'm clearing out a car. Oh, no. (laughs) And I find a smashed container, Ziploc bag full of snickerdoodles. Doodle, blonde, brownie, brownie. Yes. really yes. Yes. together, and I go, damn, I would have eaten that. I say you're doing it wrong because there is <laughs> never, there has never been a full bag of Chrissy's mom's. Must cookies. have fallen down or they, something. They, they they usually, it it falls into something because remember, I drive the RV home in the dark. I park it at two in the morning, and then I don't get in it for six months. Oh no! I, yeah, but no, the the cookies the cookies deliberately get placed in the center console of my RV exactly for that. Yes. Let's yeah. talk Saturday dinner. So. You've been fed, you've been racing. Saturday dinner, Chrissy already mentioned, is like family dinner. This is the time where everybody gets a little crazy and tries to impress each other with what they can do trackside. Sometimes there's a potluck. This is the time to actually put some effort into hey, lovely wart burgers, which are amazing. You didn't mention what's in a wart burger, by the way. We're going to do a wart burger video coming oh. up. Oh, of how to make the wort burgers Ooh. along with how to make the pancake mix. We're going to have a whole video series starring Chrissy about prepping 3 p.m. style track food. That's awesome. I think uh, 
Aaron just got excited. I think he did. Uh, like pants tight excited so listen if it's saturday night and you're gonna have a good time there's this is the time to do trackside extravaganza if you're eating pizza on a saturday night you're, you failed impressing anybody in the attic this is the time to bust out the smoker or the deep fryer and go to freaking down if there's a potluck the sous vides are running. There's like gallons of Russian soup. There's like New England roadside hot dogs. Uh, even theme appropriate tuna sandwiches can be amazing on a Saturday night as long as it is theme appropriate. The reason we started eating spam because we had a car that looked like a spam can. All right. So if you have a theme that can connect to the food, Saturday night is the time to do it. Um, have we fried turkeys? Oh, hell yeah, we have. We fried everything else after the turkeys. When you have a pot of hot oil at the side of the track, why are you not bringing like eight bags of frozen French oh, fries? Oh my gosh. I can like sweet tots, potato man. French fries. And they're, the tots and they're just awesome. And they did funnel they cakes. Taste, yeah. Funnel cakes. And they all taste a little like turkey. Which is Man. only a benefit. <laughs> um, so eating I, I, fresh funnel cakes that we made at the racetrack is kind amazing. of a unique experience. fried night. Amazing. Yeah. Oh. yeah I, we've we've done when we have smaller races and we're not feeding as many people. We've had steak and and shrimp on yep. the on the grill. You know, like raw pork. <laughs> That's only at two o'clock in the morning. Two o'clock in the morning. Do not let your stone friends make <laughs> pork loin and eat it without someone who is not a friend it's of Bob Marley. It's its doneness. Okay? It was in the dark too. To it was their the next, benefit. So the next morning, they looked at it and went, "Oh, oh, we ate that." Oh. <laughs> it was like tuna tartare. Was- seared tuna. It was a pork it was loin. Seared tuna. There's nothing wrong with. Slightly pink pork, by the way, everyone. Oh, no. <laughs> no, no, that's Menzel, fine. how was that pork chop sandwich you had? The, was that today or yesterday? Oh, yeah. That was, the that was today. Was yeah it, did it have a little pink in it? Uh, of course. Yeah, see? You, you do not have to overcook pork. And this is, a, you know, and I'm telling this to a guy who's married to a food safety professor. Mm-hmm. But I'm telling you, if you poke the pork loin and it goes oink, it's not done. <laughs> <laughs> no. I, I no. will say you know, that, that pork chop sandwich was made when I was completely you know, straight in, in he's, not, he's leaning in, away from the mic altered, right now, not in any sort of an altered state at all. So yeah, it was done proper. All right. Uh, just real quick. Let me finish with this and then I will pass it off. Cause this is the last thing I have to say is going to the track and cooking all weekend is kind of like camping. You have to pay attention to bring the right stuff. We already talked about crock pot liners. We already talked about coolers, paper, pencils, utensils, you know, like serving utensils, knives, cutting boards, mixing bowls, spoons, trash bags. You have to have a lot of trash bags. I know I'm not really talking about the food, but if you went camping, you'd bring a trash bag and a, and a spoon. Why would you go to the track, make a whole pot of chili, and then go, oh, oh wait, 57 plastic spoons for the 57 people who have to eat it? Always go and the hot bowls. These, and the bowls. Always bring more than you think because random people will show up and eat your food, especially ones that run Facebook accounts. And then you're going to run out of spoons or bowls or things and, you know, like cups, red cups, solo cups. They, oh, they you take litter them the world. With, with a Sharpie so that you can write your damn name. Right. Around. Exactly. I'll pass it off here. I'm just saying... Think about it like camping. You don't want to have to run out and buy something like trash bags. No. You want to have it all there. Or and, anything. And, yeah, some tracks are good about trash. Other ones, what? We pick up trash? What? You know? Or you have to take it far away or something like that. You know, take your bags far away. Okay, let me do a quick thing on organization, which I also do a unboxing video, a, a boxing unboxing video uh, for you. But basically, uh, I'm suggesting at least three bins that you start with. Uh, you can use reusable bags to supplement it, but don't start with them. So I have three different boxes. Um, as Jeff was saying, your paper product the, box. So go ahead. 
Rubber the bins. bins with lids keep stuff dry because it inevitably is going to rain at some point right. and Great everything's going to get nasty and gross. So you Think need the plastic bins. Camping, everybody. Yep. So the paper product box keeps all your paper products together and dry, as we said. So these are just Rubbermaid bins. Uh, clear. I I suggest clear because then you when you, when somebody comes into your kitchen, uh, they're looking through all of your crap. Uh, they don't know, often read the labels on it. They're just going to look through everything. So. Uh, you can uh, have extra that extra utensils, everything that everybody was saying. Um, lemons box. So I call this my lemons box. It's my catch-all. So I have kitchen utensils, cutting boards, dish bin with the sponge. Uh, I also keep my first aid kit, spices, uh, miscellany, like old theme crap. Like uh, there's definitely a spam bus in the bottom of my, uh, my lemons box and other random mustaches. Uh, and then I have my food box. So I end up with the, 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 it gets filled with the food that's just for the weekend. So it's jars of sauce, cans of spam, chips, buns, sodas, that kind of stuff. And it keeps it all together. And then once you fill those boxes and still have leftover stuff, then put them in reusable bags. But at least it's nice to be able to pack them this way. And then, uh, everybody knows where all this stuff is. So they still dig through all the bins trying Absolutely. to find stuff until all the you time. show up. Yep. And so if you, so my suggestion here is with organization, find something that works for your team. But if you start out organized, uh, it can only get worse from there. So if you don't start with a plan and you're not organized, it's going to be nightmarish by the end of time you try to pack on Sunday. Your, your panic will look like Sputniks. I was going to say that, but I was trying to be from a name, name, nameless. We I know. think they own it. They know. <laughs> It's fine. I mean, you're not starting by taking your five-gallon bucket of stuff and just dumping it on the ground around wherever you happen to stand. So that's a good start. Anyway, um, Jeff, you kind of went through all the accessories we had listed on here. So I think we're good there. I'm going to talk about drinks first because you need to hydrate like Mental talked about and like you always hear Jay say, you got to hydrate. Well, the people that bring a case of water and a case of Gatorade you know what happens about 15 minutes after everyone gets to the track is there are half drunk waters littering your paddock space and garage and car and no one knows which one's theirs. And now they're all hot because they're sitting out in the sun and no one wants to drink them. And now you've got all this waste of bottles, waste of water, waste of everything. It's a terrible way to do it. So instead bring jugs, those big orange rubber made jugs that they, you know, like it's, sports games or on the back of construction trucks bring those we bring two of them sometimes three usually with two though one full of water and one we make for gatorade with the gatorade powder so we've got several five gallon uh, water jugs and we fill them up here at home with our tap water because our tap water is pretty good here um, and, and free yeah and free so we've got i think five or six, I think we have six of those jugs. So I know we've brought upwards of 30 gallons of water to a summer race and gone through most least, of it. Yeah. yeah. Um, so bring those and um, keep them in a shady place. and don't, don't get too hot. Fill your jugs up and then give everyone a reusable bottle. Like we like Nalgene bottles, but they're like 10 bucks. Put everyone's name on them. They're a keepsake. We put a 3 p.m. logo and everyone's name on it. And there you go. Everyone needs to bring it to the next race. Two thirds of them will, the one third that forget, they get the spare bottle. It's the bottle of shame. It's the loner bottle. So you know, have one of those. It's, on too. it's, it's yeah. pink and it's stripy. <clears throat> yep. And the other one's blue just said, this says shame and suck up. Suck up. <laughs> <laughs> yep. So Jeff usually ends up with one of those. Anyway. Um, Only because mine broke. Yeah. But everyone knows then that where's your bottle and you have responsibility for it. You know where it is, you can handle it. And you, the, you have so much less waste that way. And you always have something to drink and it's always cold and you're, you're not running out. So give that a try. You do have to keep everything all hot and or cold though. Um, Chrissy might talked about how to keep stuff hot. I'm going to talk about keeping it cold. I like large coolers because they have more thermal capacity. So it keeps them cold a little longer. And ideally you, you you separate them a little bit so that things stay cold as long as possible. Cause the last thing you want everyone doing is ruffling through the cooler that has all the food in it to try to find a beer, keep the beer in one cooler. Mm -hmm. That's the beer cooler. This is the food cooler. If you have a cooler for all your ice stuff for the race, you know, for the, for the race cars, that's an ice cooler. Keep them separate for their known jobs. So people don't go rifling through it all the time. Cause the more times the cooler is open, it's just ruining the cold every single time. Um, blocks of ice last a whole lot longer than cubed, both in your cool shirt cooler and in your regular cooler. So 
get some blocks. It makes a big difference. If you can get dry ice, fantastic. But I, I've found it's pretty hard to find and pretty expensive here. So that's a shame. I, I think I've seen one team that brings a small chest freezer that they have plugged in ahead of the time. They fill it with their stuff. They just put that in the trailer. They get there, they drag it out and plug it back in again. That way it's got kind of their food wow. in it. They've got their ice things they can put in it. It keeps stuff cold. Seems like a decent idea if you've got the room for it. Or, you know, did, a fridge. We, yeah, we did that with the the Oklahoma guys. And Because if you've got one and you unplug it, it's still a cooler. Yeah. Just don't open it. Yeah, totally. And, and they it, are stunningly cheap if you buy like a, a one on Marketplace or Craigslist. Yeah, because people just usually want to get yeah, rid people, of it. At some yeah, point. people want it out. Yeah. Um, they're also, it's, it's nice that they fit in a certain floor pan and they're, you can't really move them into other, like, you can't really like lay it on its back. Like if you lay a, you want to bring a fridge and you happen to lay it on its back or it moves around, all the oil comes out of the compressor and you can't plug it in for 24 hours. The coolers don't really do that or the, the chest freezers, they kind of stay in one place. Or if you want to be really cool down, uh, down when I was running with Craigers, the 24 Chris Medico was doing, we was our pit mom for the weekend. He found these government surplus blood chilling coolers is what they were. But these things will run on any kind of power, 12 volt, 24 volt, 110 volt, you name it. Plug it into something, it'll, it'll find a way to come on. It'll be a freezer, it'll be a cooler, whatever you want to be. They're pretty big and they're pretty inefficient. But you know, if you can find them for a reasonable price on the government surplus site, it was a pretty neat thing to have. The track I'm on there. Gov deals right now. Yeah. Oh, they also had a battery in them too. Like there's a, they've run on anything. It's like, you know, the multi-fuel engines. That, well, what's that run on? Yes. Whatever. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> I got, I got kerosene or jet a, or, you know, yep. Okay. It'll do it. Uh, so that, that was actually a neat thing. Blood like cooler, that. you say, huh? Yeah. <laughs> mm, looking for some of them. So you're, you're making this food and you, you've got to get, you're, you're generating dishes. Now there's several schools of thought on this one. Uh, the three pedal mafia folks that they tried to go green and it just, just didn't work out. I think that's just the economy of scale. It's the know, worst. There's, you know, 14 people, but I've, I've done it very successfully on smaller teams. Here's totally. the number one thing about, you know, the dishes do them now. Do, don't let them soak. All right, I'm letting my egg pan soak. No, just go and do the dishes now because you're going to need that dish. Or that you're making, spoon. You're going to need that dish or that spoon when you're making the next <laughs> food and it's frying and you go to look for it and it's soaking. So um, if you don't have an RV or you don't have water, a lot of the uh, West Coast tracks out here, you don't have water hookups. Uh, oh, good call. Just a cheap, literally go to a dollar store and get a small rubber bin and that's your mm -hmm. soap bin. And you go and fill that with some water and then you scrub everything off and then you go and rinse these things off. Uh, we, we make jokes about Steve, the dishwashing fairy, but Steve recognize here's a job nobody's doing and it is essential. Designate someone. And if you don't have a dishwashing fairy, just each meal, Hey man, I need you to do the dishes for this one. Cause everyone, and, and if they're not willing to do their part on a team, they, you probably don't want them in your damn car. <laughs> so uh, on that one. So you, you do have the options of paper plates and utensils. Uh, you can go to uh, the thrift stores or even like the dollar stores uh, that buy out old inventory. Plates are cheap. Like you buy a dish set for 10 bucks and it'll have bowls and plates. And no, these are not high quality China. And then that way, when they break, you don't care. Same thing with all of your utensils. You can have spares and uh, do all of those. I have gone into the larger showers at road Atlanta. There's some other places. Jeff did, tells the infamous story of thawing a Turkey while he was taking a shower. You can go into the larger showers at New Hampshire barber. I'm trying to think of some of the other ones. And while you're in there, Taking a shower, go ahead and scrub those dishes. I'd like to mention that I was not showering with the turkeys. He just threw them. <laughs> I was defrosting the turkeys and just got really, really wet. 
Um, otherwise, there, you know, you, there's the bathroom sink. If it's a smaller track and they don't have the bathroom sink, just you, you need a hose. Go and fill the hose. Scrub a little dishwashing turd here and there, but you can't let them sit. So as soon as you're done preparing that meal, go and get those dishes done. And then as soon as everybody's done eating, go and get those dishes done or as much of them as you can because when it comes time to eat again, that's not when you want to wash dishes. I'm going to add this on there. It's not in my notes. And with regards to the food at night, especially in the summertime, we're all out there racing. We're all getting dehydrated. You, everyone knows you can sweat out more water than you can take in. You can have water constantly drank and it doesn't matter if you pull the stent in the car, you're going to be dehydrated. And what I found from my time in Africa and my time in the Middle East is there's this magic hour about seven o'clock where I've just been pounding water, pounding water, pounding water. The Sun has gone down. It's starting to cool off. And I finally go and have that one. I've got to go to the bathroom because I've drank too much water. I emerge from that immediately starving because once my body is hydrated, then it remembers, oh, you're also at a calorie deficit. So you were hungry now. And that's where those crock pots really come in handy. Because if you're not in sync with the dinner bell and then you find you're, you ate just a little bit and you find yourself starving after you're hydrated, that really works. And I also like the hors d'oeuvres that we have. It's always yeah. hors d'oeuvres, chips and dip or well, charcuterie. And I, I think the chips, dip, charcuterie slash whatever it is that we're doing, the, 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 whatever that magical multi-layer, 27,000 layer dip you have is amazing. Or, or is that like a Sam's Club deal? Costco. Costco. Uh, you're, you're not eating on time. And there are some people who are like at six o'clock, their stomach is like, feed me now. But we just got off track and we got to change those tires or, you know, whatever. Still, you know, the axle just came back from the parts run and, and people need to wait until it's ready. And that those things help. Just think about your teammates. Yeah. Think about the crazy world of life at the track and just know that you're going to have to be really flexible with, Meal times, and those hors d'oeuvres also help because people usually start drinking around that time. So having something <laughs> in their stomach helps with that. Yeah. And lastly, it's on the subject of dumbass teammates. How do you get your dumbass teammates to help you do all this? Because somebody's got to do it, and you know some things like the dishes, no one really wants to do, but it's part of all the things you need to do on the team. So we like to designate roles for everyone among the team. Sometimes it's for the whole weekend. You know, your job, all right, Chrissy, your job is you're leading the pit, the, 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 the camp crew. All right, Jeff, you're leading the, um, the solstice this weekend. All right, men, you know, like whatever, make it simple. But beyond that, you can even have individual meals. Like sometimes Greg will say, all right, I'll do half a Saturday night dinner. Like I'll, I'll roast the pig, you know, have it all clear. Ahead I forgot of time. about the pig roast. Right. Hell yeah. Yeah. So ha have it all clear ahead of time, who's doing what and when, if they have a specific job, they're more likely to do it. And people like people want to help. Usually if they don't like mental said, they shouldn't be on your team. You're not gonna, if you're not helpful, I don't want you in the car at all. You don't deserve to be there. So, but if someone has a specific job, it's much easier for them to do it than just look around and see what needs to be done. Well, everyone should be doing that all the time, but it's also nice that when something needs to be done, you know, all right, you know what? That's not really my job. I'll help if I need to, but you know, Jeff can do that. And then later on, when something, when the Honda breaks or something, Jeff's you know, like, all right, well, Chris has got that. I'll help him if I need to. It, it's kind of a little break. We're not always on all the time and things get done, but you know, when the, when things go sideways, everyone helps. Well, and I, I think that's how Steve became the dishwashing fairy is usually Chrissy and I were cleaning up like the kitchen you know, we're, you know, the first thing we do is we put all the utensils in the bin and then I start like scrubbing the flat top or taking out the trash and Chrissy's putting away all the cold food and running around and make sure everybody ate. And then we turn around and like, oh, you know, we've been doing this for 30 minutes. Maybe it's time to do the dishes and we look over and they're already done. And yeah. that's the kind of helpful teammate that you need. Someone who doesn't need to be asked, someone who just shows up and helps. Don't be afraid at the same time because people come into, if you've got a new teammate and they're coming into chaos and they don't know where they fit in, hey, could you do me a favor? Please go take this trash out or go do this. And, you know, I, I haven't had anyone say, screw you, that's not my job. Yeah, don't take the trash out. That'd be <laughs> terrible. Yeah. 
Well, I think that's part of what Chris is saying for the appropriate expectations, especially for new teammates, which I think we've talked about before, especially a new arrive and drive, get to know what the paddock looks like. They, but of course, most people, especially when I'm running around like crazy, somebody says, can I help you? If the dishes are done, most of the time, it's just me trying to clean up, put things away, get ready for the next meals, which is by the time I tell somebody it's easier for me to do. But there are little <laughs> things like that that are easy to, to be able to pick up and, and help. And how many times have we gotten on the radio and been like, Chrissy, when do we need to start the crock pot? I say it's on. Stir it in yeah. a half an hour. <laughs> or Actually, I, th- I think, yeah, it's usually Literally the every Saturday, that's what happens. <laughs> yeah, it's usually the opposite. Hey, Chrissy, that was really good. You turned to 48 that time. You moved up to 7th. Did you, uh, did you stir, the, stir the, the crock lunch. pot? Turn on the Chrissy, you're driving her. Turn on the crock pot. No, it's on. It's just, it's stir it. I told you. Sometimes. Yeah. That's way okay. better when we started. When we started, I was like, I'm about to get in the car now. Anybody know where breakfast is? You know, so I mean, sometimes it, it does learned. happen, but we've for the learned. most part, we're we're not we're anymore. We don't anymore. We're pretty no. good. No, having the Rolls really helps out. Like, so everyone knows what they're supposed not to be doing. Not the Rolls when. Royce or no, no, not the <laughs> breakfast Rolls. Not, <laughs> not the bagel Rolls. I I, uh, I know you guys like to do this at the three. You call it the three pedal mafia level, and it is it is shaped how I go on other teams. Uh, the Inglorious Bastards, we always eat well. It's a big deal. Uh, Friday night is always, we go out and get a team dinner. Doesn't matter if the car is broke or not. That's their tradition, you know, but it's always a good thing. And it's this, but it's the same drill. Hey, so-and-so has got breakfast the next day. It's an email chain that starts weeks before the race. Uh, with the guys that are running out here doing the vintage stuff, Mark Francis Racing. There is a gourmet who literally starts at nine o'clock working on uh, in the morning, working on dinner. Well, I've got some cucumbers that I've been making, uh, soaking in vinegar, so they'll be prepared. We did a roasted goat at uh, Button Willow. Yes, it was. Yes. And, then they, and then they put, or I'm sorry, it was a lamb and they put chickens in it. So it was a, a lamb duck dinner, whatever they call it. And then- Turducken. So yeah, he's getting a full But it's not a turducken if it's a lamb on the outside. Yeah, la- they, la- duck. And, la- la- and there's no duck. There's no duck. <laughs> <laughs> the lambkin. Lambkin. The lambkin. lambkin. Like lamb- yeah, right, it was lambkin. And then um, as, as dinner started winding down, they were cleaning up, and he cut up very specific stuff because that was going to go into the breakfast omelets the next day. So they've got this entire rhythm. And at a Mark Francis race or at an Inglorious Bastards race or at a Three Paddle Mafia race, because everyone's got enough calories in them, there's not a whole lot of fighting. There's not a lot of nice callous right mistakes that get made. Everyone's usually in a pretty darn good mood, even when all three cars have blown up. Yeah. It, it, it's, it's, it's an overlooked thing, but when people have their basic Maslovian needs of food and water met, they're a lot more jovial about what else is going on. It's a lot less for everybody else to think about especially with in the 3 p.m. world we have our own rolls uh our own rolls royce um Not we, nope uh <laughs> it's nice to be able for you know the other rvs that are coming you don't don't worry about food you know bring enough what you need for to get there you know bring something but you know i we always know that greg's fridge is usually full of random stuff which is has been very helpful um because there's plenty of times where we've got extra people that are around and no extra food or we should try to keep a little bit extra food but yes absolutely i think it's uh, it's helpful to, to plan ahead I think we've exhausted all of our notes. Does so. anyone have yeah. anything uh. else to bring up for the good of the order? Nice. Now yeah. we're going to move on to the next section. On the spot. On the spot. Spot. <laughs> <laughs> Not as good as just a tip, but it's still coming from Chrissy this week. All Chrissy, right. We've, t- we've talked about a whole bunch of food and a whole bunch of tips. I want Stuffed you to. Our- Stuffed camel. Is that the answer? No, unless you've had it. Uh, favorite what is that me- the answer to, Jeff? Just favorite <laughs> like meal at the track. Food in Africa that sucks? <laughs> yes, I know that answer. <laughs> <laughs> That's not where we were going with this. Uh, favorite meal, favorite tip. Paddock pit Ooh. tip. Hmm, okay. Good one. Well, I already used crock pot liners last week. We already talked about that, so it's not that. Um, all right, I'll, I'll give you guys time to gather. Uh, learned this trick during one of my uh, trainings, air military trainings. Uh, 
our diets were getting really bad because it was 12 hour days and we had very specific schedules we had to meet. And when you've got a little, if you've got a smaller team, you can go to the meat section of your local grocery store and just get the smaller flank steaks. They're like $3 each. You can get a, a big pack of 10 of them. Take a, um, a marinade, just go grab a bottle of $3 marinade, small Ziploc bags, each of the steaks, throw a little of the McCormick season in there, throw the steaks, lay them flat in your refrigerator and let them marinate leading up to the race, throw those in the freezer or put them in the bottom of your cooler. And now you've got good marinated steaks ready to throw on that grill to feed your team. And they'll, they'll cook up in 10 minutes when the coals are hot. So uh, I know Chrissy, you know, one of the things that Chrissy mentioned briefly, but she didn't get enough credit for, and I'm going to throw some credit her way, is really taking care of the dietary needs of the team. Uh, my brother doesn't, can't eat eggs because he's allergic to them, and there's always a bagel with a little cream cheese, and the rest of us like, hey, how come Jim's get a bagel? And we're all like, yeah, because he's allergic to eggs. Eat your freaking omelet, asshole. Um, <laughs> But but recently you you've got gluten issues. Mental shows up. He's like claiming to be vegan, but then I see him eating the bacon cheese steak. Right? I don't know. Uh, Soggy's <laughs> Soggy's bacon is exempt from vegan. Sure, okay, status. okay. So Vicky, happy birthday, Vicky! Brought a pot of African peanut sweet potato stew oh, once. Oh my god, that was so and good. And it was amazing. I've made it at home twice since yeah, then. Never as good at that time. Maybe it's just because I was at the track and I was hungry as a mother, but and Bruce Fantastic. says, why does have any meat in it? Where's the meat? In it? <laughs> so then she makes him meat too, because she knows that he likes meat. So she has another oh, dish. Oh, he likes that... the meat. <laughs> yes, he does. African peanut Sweet potato stew. Good call. Good call. I guess, I don't know if this is the best food, but it's the best memories is the when we do fry fests on hot on summer nights oh. at races. <laughs> best. You know, like the fried turkey and then the fry, then the tots. And then like the stuff shows up that I mean, like, where the hell did we even find this? And it's fried. We're just throwing everything in at that point. Oh, yeah. We're just well, yelling and saying if it's oh, like, yeah. hey, Anybody got thrown this in the front? Right. Well, then, like, we'd like, we leave the funnel cake batter, but then we're just dipping, like, cookies in it and throwing those in there. Like, you name it, we're throwing the fryer. And we're all just having a great time, just sitting around with your friends on a warm night, eating fried shit and feeling good about it. Fry, fry Fest is great because it comes out in stages. Yeah. So, so yeah. you eat the turkey and the stuffing and the whatever mac and cheese that Omar brings or whatever, and then you're like, Oh, fresh French fries. And then you eat some of that and you eat some more turkey. And then you're like, ooh, tater tots. They're hot as balls. Right. Hot. That's exactly what I was going to say. And then like my tongue is 20 hard. minutes later. It's like sweet potato fries. When did they show up? Give me some of them. Because I always hang out with you next to the fryer. My mouth is charred by the time every time we have fryer, fry night because I'm like. We eat it right out of the bowl. We like put it in the bowl, toss it in and eat some. Ah, and then we deliver it to everybody else. <laughs> oh, I, next time I've never seen one of these, but I'm coming and I'm going to go totally friggin' state fair on you guys. I'll do the deep fried Twinkies. I'll do deep fried cheesecake, deep fried bacon. It's coming. We, we just don't have that at the track side. We just start throwing crap in and then Whatever we, just never we, can, we did for Greg's freezer. And well, <laughs> Friday, Friday night, that was for summit point. Um, yeah. Carnival. Yeah. That's why we did it. So yes, because that was the first one. Yes. So I made, I brought all kinds of the funnel cake mix and the, the dipped everything because we planned for it. The, all we'd ate was fried food. Yes. Which is that totally great. fine. Uh, so I think mine, I love that. That was one of my favorite memories. I, I completely agree. Uh, the pig and every time we do a pig is pretty darn awesome. Oh, yeah. uh, I'm really, they're really fun. They are we have meat for years, uh, and it. What? I was thinking about thawing it in the trailer at Road Atlanta with all the space heaters <laughs> pointed at it. <laughs> Chrissy, safety squirrel, propane safety squirrel was not happy. I was that not. Day. Well, it's fine. I, I, that was the time I had the flu, so I didn't really care. I just was like pretend hey, not caring. And please then, hey, tell me you're hey, venting. Please hey, tell you're, me you're hey, venting I, that. I, 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 your trailer's bleeding. <laughs> <laughs> when, when it's more than freezing, at, this is a good tip. Great tip. When it's below 32 degrees in the paddock, 
your meat is not going to thaw sitting on a table. <laughs> well, and you ha- still have these problems with the rest of your f- stuff yeah. in your cooler. Even yeah. if you just have your cooler closed, you still end up with very frozen if it's food. When it's that cold, I sometimes leave the cooler open overnight if it's going to be that cold because it makes Saves it better. ice. Exactly. Uh, All right. Any, any more good tips? Mental, that we did, you give a, did you give one? It's yeah, meat. Started. It's, it's, oh, that's it's, right. Steaks, a marinade steak. Steaks. Steak, marinade steak. Good yes, one. That was it. That's yeah. good one. That was a good one. All right. I think that's it. Oh my gosh. I'm totally not ready. Does anybody know what we're talking about next week? Yes. Yes, yes I do. Oh my God. What? Is that possible? Guess what? <laughs> Go the ahead. nation is emerging from lockdown. Not around here. Uh, and there's even a possibility that some areas might have real races this month. That's kind of scary to think of. Uh, but iRacing is still part of our landscape, obviously, because we talked about the whole darn show about iRacing. Uh, but next week, we will get, have pro instructor Tyler Hoffman on board to talk about how we can use this tool to go faster on track and how you can go faster in the virtual world as well. That's awesome. I'm still finding zero parallels between iRacing and real racing, but that's okay. We're, we're all seeing parallels between your iRacing. <laughs> I'm way better in He's real life. He's way better in real life. <laughs> I can actually stay on the track in real life. Usually. I, I don't know if I can find the line, but uh, it, after this time off of the track, I, we are all going to be rusty. Um, anyway, thank you for downloading us next week. Maybe I'll learn something. But we hope you enjoyed and learned something this week edition of everyone racers we'll also hope you'll join us in the world of driving i racing and i building because everyone can be an i racer even you and real racer too i guess if you enjoyed this podcast subscribe it's totally free then go to itunes and give us a five star rating because in the covid19 digital world that's money these days there's no real money anymore it's just five star ratings on itunes if you hate us give us five stars tell us why if you have any questions you want to tell us what you're working on give us some show ideas or anything else drop a comment on our facebook page everyone racers or email us at everyone.racers at gmail.com find us on instagram or twitter at everyone.racers thanks again and until next week keep the carb loading side up unless you're gluten sensitive I can still eat carbs, but it's okay. I, I know. Uh, I don't know. Just just eat the food and keep the shiny side up. <laughs> it's terrible. <laughs> oh, wait. I got to push stop.